Greetings my dudes! This is a bit of an impromptu video made primarily to showcase the power of the K Spectre build in the end stages of the game as well as detail the various changes I made to the build to increase its end game power. Also, do you note that this is my take on the build and I in no way take credit for the original build, with credits and stuff out of the way. The build at its current state does about 150 to 200 million DPS and has a decent amount of survivability, clearing things like T17, 100% uber juice delirium maps and simulacrum with great ease and deathless. With this info, I should warn you that the current state of the build plus the POB in the description are designed for softcore and therefore sacrifice some survivability for more DPS. If you want to take this build to hardcore, I'd recommend dropping one of the cluster jewels and the necromantic ages and getting some more max resists and life on block. Another key point to note is that this build is life based. This is in stark contrast to many endgame spectre builds who switch over to CI. The reason for this is that I firmly believe that going for CI is a huge reduction in survivability and doesn't provide as many benefits as people seem to think. The reasons are threefold. Number one, as you will see here, it is relatively easy to achieve 85% chaos res or even more than that. Number two, bone offering gives life when you block, which is wasted on CI builds. Number three, most chaos damage in this game is somewhat balanced around the fact that many people will have minus 60% resists. So if your build has 85%, you are already getting a huge stack of mitigation from just getting to that threshold without having to go for the immunity. In summary, if you decide to use this build, go life. With that done, let's take a look at our passive tree. The main things to note when going over the tree are these. Number one, you will need sets of cluster jewels consisting of one large, two mediums and two smalls. I'd recommend using two sets for hardcore or three if you want less survivability and more DPS. You can use fewer cluster jewels, however, the more you have, the better the DPS. I will go over the specific cluster jewels I'm using in the gearing part of this video. Number two, you need at least 26% reduced mana reservation from your tree in order to use the various gems of this build. We get that from these nodes and these nodes over here. Number three, we need glancing blows and elemental equilibrium for this build to work. I am also using necromantic ages and you can do too if you want a huge boost in DPS and don't mind losing the survivability of your shield. Number four, we are putting hard points into death attunement instead of anointing it. Instead of that, we anoint charisma. This is done so that we can more easily get the aforementioned to 26%. Number five, glorious vanity with divine flesh on this part of the tree is a big boost in mitigation. This is optional and can be skipped for more health or some more DPS. Number six, you need at least 155 strength and dexterity, so you might need to grab some dex or strength nodes from your tree in order to achieve that. Keep in mind that cluster jewels are also a great way of getting dexterity or strength, or even balancing out your resists. In general, your skill tree should look like this if you're going to follow this guide. Your ascendancies are also pretty standard for a necro. First, go into mindless aggression, followed by unnatural strength. Lastly, pick up Commander of Darkness and Mistress of Sacrifice. You can also use Plaguebringer instead of Mistress of Sacrifice if you want to go full glass cannon, though I do not recommend that for solo play. With the trick done, let's take a look at our gems. In our weapon, we are using Desecrate, Enduring Cry, and Bone Offering. Desecrate plus Bone Offering are used in combination with Trigger Socketed Spell on skill use to automatically spawn corpses and proc the Bone Offering effect. Enduring Cry is socketed in the weapon due to its great survivability increase and the fact that I ran out of sockets while making this build. If you don't want Enduring Cry, feel free to swap it out for either Carrion or Stone Golem. In our gloves, 
we are using mid shield support, minion life, feeding frenzy, and animated guardian. Animated guardian is used in this build to provide us with fortify and damage for our specters. Mid shield plus minion life are there to help our guardian survive most encounters, while feeding frenzy is a nice DPS boost for all our minions. Our Guardian is using the animated Guardian setup of Kai, namely Kingmaker, Stitch Demon Helmet, blind nearby enemies Veritania chest piece with a 10% life to energy shield enchant, southbound gloves, boots with life regen when hit. Keep in mind that I also got about 30% more AoE resist and 50% chaos rest from my gear in order to help my Guardian better sustain against elemental and chaos damage. In our boots, we are using Armageddon Brand, Projectile Weakness, Awakened Curse on Hit, and Elemental Weakness. I use Armageddon Brand because of its very quick cast speed and its power in 100% Delirium maps. Awakened Curse on Hit is used in conjunction with two curses to increase my minion damage even further. Keep in mind that your Awakened Cursor hit needs to be at least level 5 in order to apply two curses instead of the usual one. In our shield, we are using Dash with Second Wind and Steel Skin. Dash plus Second Wind provide an excellent way to move around quickly, while Steel Skin is a great survivability boost. In our chest, we are using Hatred, Val Haste, Enlighten, level 4, Awaken Generosity, Summon Skitterbots, and Bone Chill. We are using our 6 link to reduce the mana reservation of all Auroras, making us able to run Haste, Hatred, Aspect of the Spider, and Skitters with Bone Chill, while also being able to cast all our spells without any problems. Generosity is there to ensure our auras are more effective for our minions. In our helmet, we are using Ray Spectre, Awakened Great and Multiple Projectiles, Deathmark, and Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks. We, as you may have noticed, are using the 9 link helmet we crafted on our previous videos to host our Spectres and increase their DPS. For single target, we switch over Awakened Multiple Projectile for Awakened Vicious Projectiles. Lastly, we are using a rare Unset Ring with Socketed Convocation and with Crafted Aspect of the Spider. The Spectres I am using are 4 Redemption Sentries and 1 They of Tool. They of Tool provides some really great damage mitigation, which is why I am including him in my lineup. If you do not care about damage mitigation, you can just go with 5 Redemption Sentries. With gems done, Let's go over the next big part of the build, which is the gear. Keep in mind that some pieces are incredibly specific, so you want to try and get the same stats when possible. Firstly, let's go over our tree's jewels. As previously stated, we are using three sets of cluster jewels which consist of one large eight passive jewel with minion damage. Skills are Renewal, Rotten Claws and Vicious Bite. In each of our large cluster jewel sockets, we are using one medium cluster jewel with four or five passes. The skills are Precise Commander and Vengeful Commander. In each of our medium cluster jewels, we are socketing either two or three passive skill life small cluster jewels with Fell and whatever else stats we want. Note that cluster jewels are a great place to get resists plus missing stats for your build so you want to try and roll resists and attributes when possible. We are also using three unique jewels for this build. These are, in order of importance, Unending Hunger, Glorious Vanity, Fortress Covenant. Unending Hunger is a great boost in DPS and is the first jewel you should get after getting one or two sets of cluster jewels. Glorious Vanity with Zibakwa is a great boost in survivability and, and Fortress Covenant is a great 1.40% DPS increase to minions. For our flasks, we are using Seething Divine of Stunting, a Granite Flask of Warding, a Basalt Flask of Grounding, and a Bottle Faith plus Wise Oak. 
We are using granite plus basalt to mitigate a lot of the physical damage we take and make most of our 75% attack block chance. We are using Bottle Faith as a nice boost to DPS while using Wise Oak to mitigate some more elemental damage since I actually made it a point to have all my elemental resists be maxed out at the same number. For our character's weapon, we are using a plus 2 to minion gems, increased damage plus double damage wand with crafted socketed spell on skill use and minion attack and cast speed. We also use non crit to crit to remove the multi mod craft and get plus 30% chaos res. This wand could be improved by having increased hatred effect from Veritania. However, that costs about 300 exalts and I am not that rich. Our shield is an increased cold damage, minimum frenzy and power charge shield with cold damage as extra chaos damage, increased damage per block chance and chance to deal double damage. This shield is used in conjunction with necromantic ages to heavily increase our DPS. If you don't have a shield like this or you want more survivability, you can use any life plus life on block shield and skip the necromantic ages part of the tree entirely. Our gloves are Grip of the Council. These are a great DPS boost for our minions and they are best in this slot. You can also corrupt them for plus 2 minion gems, although that is optional. Our boots are 2 toned plus 1 to raise spectre gem boots with life, increased movement speed, cannot be frozen and resists. These are helpful and relatively easy to craft early on, plus they help you reach 5 spectres more easily. For our belt, we are using Torrent's Reclamation. There really is no other gear piece that even comes close to this one's 20% action speed buff to you and your allies. Hand Hunter might be close, but I'd still take Torrent's Reclamation any day. Our armor is pretty important. We are using a 6 link Hunter Valder Gallia with a plus 1 to max number of spectres, increased effect of offerings, life, physical damage as chaos, and resists. The tier 1 increased offering effect is very important to roll on this piece in order to achieve a max block of 75% with glancing blows without investing any other points into block. For our helmet, we are using a 9 link bone helmet with plus 3 to minion gems, minion damage, hypothermia, LE damage, spell crit and life. On it, we also have the Spectres have increased damage enchantment. Do note that the enchantment on this helm really drives the costs high for this item, so you might want to skip it. For our rings, we are using a fractured rare vermilion ring with minion increased damage, dexterity, life, and non channel skills mana cost reduction. The minus to mana cost is crucial if you want to follow this build and have the same auras active. Our second ring is an unset ring with minion damage, life, aspect of the spider and non-channel mana cost reduction. These also have enough resists to get me to 76% on all my elemental resistances. Our amulet is also pretty important. It is a hunter plus redeemer onyx amulet with plus one to intelligent skill gems, reduced hatred mana reservation, life and non-channel mana cost reduction. In this amulet, you want the Hatred mana reserve to be tier 1 and also be max roll. You also want to use Fertile Catalysts on your amulet to make the reduced mana reservation 30%. This amulet, in conjunction with all the other reduced mana reservation we have from our tree, allows us to have 4 auras in total. One final note before moving on. You might have noticed that on all our jewelry we have crafted reduced non-channel mana cost reduction. This is because, as you can see, I only have 8 unreserved mana after activating all my auras. That means that if any of my spells cost close to or more than that, then I cannot use them. Thankfully, all our spells, with the exception of our Guardian and Spectres, can have the mana cost reduced to zero. This allows us to cast them even with only 8 mana, while also giving us the ability to do no regen maps. In closing, I'm gonna leave you with this. This build cost me about 
80 Exalt to make, and it's probably the most powerful build I've made so far, having about 160 to 200 million Cyrus DPS, while also having enough survivability to clear Simulacrum and 100% Delirium maps deathless. I'd recommend it to anyone looking to take their Spectre build into the endgame and improve their gear. You can also find the POB of this build down in the description below. I have also included the crafting methods used for much of the gear, so you can check them out if you need help crafting any one specific piece. With that, I'll leave you with a little montage of what this build can do. Thanks for watching everyone!